It's fucked up. A recent video from Jeff from Home Built by Jeff got me thinking about why my clutch felt so heavy. It may not just be the reinforced pressure plate from spec clutches that makes it heavy. So here's what I found and here's how I fixed it uh, for next to nothing, apart from my time. While rebuilding the engine recently, I had the power training pieces. It was the ideal time to check all the clutch components. But firstly, you've got to take it all apart. And of course, with the special tool for driving out the bushings. Thank right. you very much. Don't need any special tool. Good yeah. job. Pushed out the bearing with the arm. And now we can take the arm out. And uh, As can be seen in the video, the tips of the fork well are worn. Done. Not surprising for a 35 year old car. Aren't we the clever little buggers? So how do we fix this? Without having to source another clutch fork, even if that exists new any longer. Okay, let's try and recharge the ends of this clutch fork. And stainless steel, which is a little bit harder than normal steel. Stainless steel is twice as hard as mild steel. A couple of runs of metal. And then we'll grind it down. See the original shape on that one and try and copy it as best as we can on this one. Okay. I can uh, recharge the tips with stainless steel and without overheating the core metal too much. It may not be as hard as the original, but it will work. Seems to need a bit more spike sticking out. good. Well, it doesn't look too overheated. And put it up on the edges and then we'll file it down. <laughs> now there's not too much heat in the end of it. Still got a bit of a little bit more on that side bead from there to there. There you go. Recharged. Just checking to see See there, it's worn slightly. Build that up a bit, fill in that bit, and then it's a uh, highly wily time. That's going to take the longest. Yeah, the love of old cars, what we do to repair them. Mm -hmm. A clutch fork like this is available any longer. One day, one day I'm going to build a place to put my torch. Torch hanger. There you go. Hope you're still filming that because there's some nice little welds. Not overheating the metal. Another bead there. Maybe a bit more on the edge as well. profile there starting to loom up it's gonna be rounded and then it's gonna be okay. Well when I would do it so we haven't 
heated very deeply you can see on the edge there I haven't heated very deeply into the metal so I shouldn't have altered uh, I shouldn't have altered too much of its chemical properties the rest are just going to be filing Afterwards, getting the fork tip to be totally parallel is the most important. The load will be applied evenly to the release bearing, thus reducing the chance of binding and the need to push like an Olympic weightlifter on the clutch pedal. on there what I'm trying to see is that uh, compared to the axe the spindle the surface is the same human eyes are quite accurate to see differences uh, like that and I'm looking out through the window I can see when the spindle starts and I can see whether the bearing is level with it I can, even if the camera can't. Anything slightly more upside on this side, and I can see why the edge there is higher than this edge. The uh, bearings are not that accurate in there. When they're formed, they're rounded there and we're riding on an edge, that's why the edge is there. Like that. Well, I know what I'm talking about anyway. anyway. Probably won't film all of it because it's going to get boring. I'll show you a bit of this process, but it's going to take several hours to finish shaping this up nicely. Several hours. I mean, it's probably too boring to film the whole lot. Just thought I'd show you where we're at. Run another bead of weld on the inner edges. Gonna file those flat, and then we're just pretty much done. I've got a nice uh, rounded bit, so I'm gonna let you watch the last bit of filing. The technique is called draw filing. Run the file perpendicular to the work, just backwards and forwards, not grinding it off like that. Makes it a nice flat surface. finish less scratches more polished and then, uh, then that'll be it We did the last time, recharged the surfaces and uh, everything's okay. We've inspected the bearing surfaces, we're all good. There's no warpage on this thing, so let's stick it back in. Now we've got our braking clutch lube, high temperature, 
for the uh, splines and for the bearings. Everything is good. Everything's been cleaned and inspected. The splines on the input shaft are all being cleaned up and inspected. There's no wear. So let's get on with it. Get some lube where it's needed. Of metal that we used the other day. A wonderful piece of uh, marsh on aluminium. Uh, right, that's a broom handle cut. That's our drift for putting this in. So we we'll drive this in through there. Um, lube it up as well. A little bit more tricky than we thought. Okie dokie. This was good to take it out, but I don't want to put it back in. So, what can we use? Still good. Nearly home. Oh, two more. Ah. It's home and doing its job. That's a good one. Splines in there that line up on the splines on the shaft. Get it positioned. There's only one way that it goes on. I'm going to go clicky click. Little release bearing, a bit more high temperature grease in the areas that could do it. Fine. Put the clutch on the engine, put the engine back on the top frame connected to the gearbox. Jump for later. Once back together, we'll see if the clutch feels any lighter. The other problem with the Fiero's gearbox is difficult gear changes. Maybe something is worn out there as well. I haven't actually got the uh, video of doing this, but uh, here are a couple of photos. Uh, the gear selector needs to be checked as it can feel a bit floppy and it's not the cables of the gear loop but they were rebuilt or replaced a long time ago so you can see it's the same kind of thing you know, just where the little pin is has to be welded up and reshaped once it's all back together I bled the clutch and uh, everything seemed to be working fine and I took the car for a test run did seem to be a lot easier to change the gear. And uh, we'll have to see if that makes a difference on the track. Nope, because I missed the gear. Yeah. <laughs> That's a digital sanctuary, what a good friend, man.